Jake, we were there until the wee hours of the morning. Right, right, right. Your impressions of the game last night? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I was impressed by the fans. I mean, I think that, you know, he handled it with class. I thought the standing ovation he got. I thought the, I actually thought the Jazz did a great job with the tribute video. You know, I thought, I thought it paid homage to everything that he did for the organization. You know, I, I love that they included the dunk contest in it. I love that, you know, there was, there was just a lot of great mentions in that video and it felt uh, very genuine out of them. It didn't feel like they half-assed it. It didn't feel like, you know, you missed anything or like you messed it up. It felt on point. It felt really good. And I think the Jazz deserve a lot of credit for that. Uh, and then, yeah, the fans. I mean, I, I pregame, you know, when they're doing the introductions, you know, in our members only group, I put a video in there and, and you can just see the reaction. You can see all the cheering, the positivity. I was happily uh, impressed slash relieved uh, that it was a standing ovation. And by the way, throughout the game, I did love the cat and mouse game between the fans and Donovan. There were several times where he was laughing last night on the floor. You know, he shot an air ball at one point and got booed and he had a good laugh. Oh, he didn't get and, booed. Everybody applauded him. They were jeering him and he was laughing yeah, so. about it, which was great. I, I agree with you. I think the way the Jazz fans handled this, I, I think it just reinforces that this is one of the best fan bases in the NBA. Um, I think this could have gone very, very differently. Um, I didn't, I, I, I didn't see one thing that I would want to do different. I thought the tribute video, as you said, was great. Um, I thought that the, the moments having his family there, um, I think the moment after the game where the jazz had won the game and there were, they were hugging and you know, like it just was a really good night unless you were a Cleveland Cavalier. Fast. I think for any Cav other than Donovan Mitchell, last night was probably pretty frustrating because yeah. you lost a game you clearly should have won. Um, you know, you you get into a situation where Karis LeVert and Evan Mobley commit two really dumb fouls on Jordan Clarkson, um, and I think the Jazz scored 24 points in three seconds, uh, or <laughs> at least that's what it felt like, and Jordan Clarkson single-handedly shot the Jazz right back into this game in a game they had no business winning. And Donovan easily, I think, could have had 60 last night. He shot horribly in the fourth quarter. Um, but it was just a really good night to be a Utah Jazz fan. It felt good to be cheering for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, it felt good to be cheering for the Jazz as they came back. They had the lead. They lost the lead. They came back. Right. You know, there were just, the house was alive last night. Um, I just thought it was a really good night for the Utah Jazz, and I hope it's one that Jazz fans don't take for granted or forget. I know I won't. You know, we had our, our guy Austin Apierski, um and his buddy were there. We took him to the game because of you supporting the show. Yes, yes, yes. We had a great time. Austin opted for the jacket, though. Yeah, which I thought was a good selection. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that'll be, that'll work. Austin took the easy way out. What do you mean? Austin took the easy way out. What do you mean? You got to man up and go, you got to go. He was going to go. He was going to do exactly what he should have done. Right. Retro Stockton jersey. How about that? He was right there. Retro Stockton I, jersey. I feel like it's hard to mess up a retro Stockton jersey. But he made the one mistake that you cannot make. The cardinal sin. He called his girlfriend for advice. Daddy. Can't do it. Can't do it. As a man with free testosterone, you know, like just surging through your veins. <laughs> AP could have had, you know, any, any, any item that he wanted. That's right, T. And Austin took almost a, a windbreaker type jacket. Really nice jacket. Really nice jacket. I, really I, nice I, jacket. I mean, I thought the selection was quality, but, you know, I, I agree that it, it isn't a Stockton. <sighs> you know, like. You had, and he had it, too. He had it, too. And the thing that I didn't want to tell him is. You, I would have bought you like the shorts and the jersey because the, ga the game was, hey, you get two tickets. You get to sit with Jake and I, um, and you can you can buy any item you want in the team store. Right. And if he'd have picked up a jersey, I'd have been like, dude, do you want matching shorts or what are we doing here? Uh-huh. But he didn't do that. He got himself a windbreaker. And then then we asked him, I, you said you asked him if, if, if they wanted to eat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They I didn't said... want to eat because I was going to buy him dinner too. Didn't want to eat. We go get a pretzel and a burrito that lit my face on fire. And we come back and Austin apierski has got Chick-fil-A, which is just a slap in the bag. Uh-huh. Chick-fil-A.
Can't have no Chick Fil A. Can't do it, dude. Can't have no Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A doesn't exist on this show anymore. Come on, man. Never did. Eric and Raleigh, uh, who's a member of the program, says retro Mitchell jersey. Yeah. Which I don't believe they were selling last night. Were you surprised to see all the jerseys? Yeah, no. I mean, all the people wearing Don jerseys. Yeah. No, I mean, I think you Don weren't. is no. I, Don, like I said yesterday, I think Don is the hero of the millennial generation for the Utah Jazz. I think Don is. He's is, the he's the hero they needed. Yeah, not the hero they deserved, but the hero they needed. And you know, to me, I I think that Don is. Yeah, I. There's no other way to say it, dude. Don is the face of the Utah Jazz for anybody 35 and under, in my opinion. Like, if you were not, if you don't vividly remember or if you were not old enough to really have captured the essence of Stockton and Malone against, like, let's say, Michael or whatever, any of those great moments when Stockton and Malone were in their prime doing their thing, Donnie is your guy and I think that it's it is it's always fascinated me and this is why we really wanted to be at this game last night because you 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 always it, so it's not often you get the opportunity to see like how much support a guy has or doesn't have number one number two it's not often you get to really take account and measure hey like who supports Donovan Mitchell who are these people is it the older generation is it the younger generation like what is what is it? And I felt like last night, to your point about all these people wearing 45 jerseys, and I'll be specific, I saw a lot of, you know, the orange color gray jersey from last year. You know, I yeah. think that was their city edition. The city edition, which I love, by I the way. I saw a ton of those in the 45 Don jersey, like a lot of those. So to me, I was just like, dude, like this makes perfect sense to me. And maybe I was even asking myself, I didn't say it, but I was like, Man, if like if I just lost faith in humanity that there are people who, you know, aren't like calling the guy racist in the comments, like, you know what I mean? Like I feel like we can't lose sight of that. I mean, you had like that building didn't fill in until probably midway through the first, but once it filled in, dude, it was legit. Like that place was loud, bro. We got to talk about though the in arena host guy though. And this is a constant, yeah. I probably get a message per home game about the in arena. There host. were a lot of tweets about Buddy last night. He was not good. Yeah. He is not good. And <laughs> I just. Hey, you know who else wasn't good? The Star Spangled Banner singer. Oh my, wasn't did good. you guys see the, the national anthem last Dude, night? Come on. She butchered it. Come something, on. It's something <laughs> terrible. <clears throat> come I on. I mean, I, I, here's the thing. Look, you're, you're getting paid. To sing the anthem. Yeah. Did you practice? Do you no. not know the words? No. What? Why would I practice? I'm what? not singing in front of anybody. Oh, 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 you say, can I not see by the sunset's early light? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it was bad. She changed the words. <laughs> now, now, to her credit, she belted that mf -er out like she knew it since birth. She clearly didn't know it since birth. And it's crazy to me, A, that the Jazz don't put the words to the National Anthem anywhere in the arena, which I think is a must. But how do you screw up the National Anthem, ma'am? Listen, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. How dude. Can, Do you know the you're singing the anthem? Ma'am, excuse me, just real quick. Do you know the words? Can you run through it one hey, time? Is it the land of the brave, home of the free, or is it the other way around? Ma'am, excuse um, me. Um, um, you know this is the national um, anthem of the United States of America, um, right? You you get that? I pledge allegiance. No, that's the pledge of allegiance to the flag. No. Um, she didn't know the um, words, but she never hesitated. She never stopped. She just belted it out. I mean, she was up there belting it out like she was Adele or Lizzo or whoever. You know. I mean, that alien-looking freak Taylor Swift, like whoever you want to point to. Come on, guy, that alien-looking freak. She was knocking it down. <laughs> Come on. But she did not know the words to the national okay, anthem. Admittedly, admittedly, she was she was nervous as hell. Oh, Dude, absolutely. You, when they put the camera on her, she was sweating. She had she was she. Can, can you center me up real quick? Can you can you center me up real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah. She's like she's like, okay, 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 okay. But no, the oh, weird thing, like, you know what the weird thing was, though? They were like, uh, and now with our national anthem, it's, oh, si like, she, they didn't even get her name out. Like, homie, the announcer, bro, didn't even get her full name out. And she was like, oh. It was like, 
and right away you knew. Oh as my soon as, God, dude. as soon as Buddy the announcer was like, and now with our national, oh! <laughs> and I thought I heard it, but they were doing Donovan Mitchell, uh, uh, like the, the introductions, and the Buddy announcer guy was like, Donovan, and she was like, oh! Laurie Marco, I say, like she was just <laughs> ready because she was nervous, dude. And well, this is my thing. Welcome to Vivid Arena. Oh, bro. How is it that you're getting paid to sing the national anthem <laughs> at the Viv in front of wh whatever capacity is probably what? 18. 18. Yep. You know? You're getting paid, bro. How do you get nervous? Like, the, and this is my thing. You're a professional. Well, allegedly, you're a professional. Alleged Clearly. Let's not get carried yeah, away. Let's not get carried away. Allegedly, you're a professional. Oh! Like, dude, let the guy say your name. And by the way, her name was Mac. And now, with the national anthem, here's Mac! Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, I don't know. I... First of all, I, you guys are aware of this if you've ever watched the show. I can't sing at all. Not a little bit. Oh, say but can I know the words. See? I know the words. By the dawn's early light. What so proudly. I know the words. She does not know the words. It's crazy to me. And you know what the thing crazy. is? When you're in the moment, when you're in the moment and they get the words wrong, it's like a it's like a boom. Like you're like, oh whoa, whoa. No, you you're like, uh oh wrong word. Uh oh. Yeah, dude. And like we're we're standing up there with Austin and his boy, and I'm like looking around and people are like, um <laughs> Hey, excuse me. Those aren't hey. the words. <laughs> hey, Mac, those aren't the words. <laughs> It was terrible, man. This case is it's empty. 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 It, the opposite of full. Dude, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I'll stop yelling, hey! oh no. Hey! Hey, Mac! Uh, <laughs> hey, yo! <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's does that star spangle. Bam, you know. Uh, <laughs> Dawns are Lee, not Bonds are Lee, okay? And shit, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> like, I just, I felt bad for her. I felt bad for her. Uh, what's up, Teddy Wayman? Good to see Teddy. Came out to Super Chicks yesterday, the official chicken sandwich of the Monty Show. Yes. Uh, is Super Chicks. Teddy uh, was one of the uh, fine uh, gentlemen that joined us for lunch in Riverton yesterday with Del hey Hargis was there. Hey Our guy Ghoul911 was there. That was cool to me. Cool. Yeah. Cool was okay. It was really cool that you guys showed up. Hey, and by the way, thank you. Uh, Nate Davis showed up at the game last dude, night, Nate, said hello. So cool to meet you, dude. Good to see you, Nate. Um, I mean, we must have seen six, eight, ten of our listeners oh, yesterday. Oh, who was the guy? The guy. Oh, man. Uh, the guy that had, had his kid who wanted to win the PS5. Remember Press, Preston? Preston was it Preston? Preston? Yeah, Preston. I think. Preston came down to our seats like the one of the the guys at the door. One of the uh, the the employees at the door was like, "Oh, hey, Monty, how are you? I'm good, man." <laughs> you were shook when he said that. You were like, "Oh, hey, bud." <laughs> yeah, I was just like, "Hey, how are you?" Like it it was really good to to be back at the Viv and see everybody. So appreciate that. Uh, Teddy said, really glad we did not boo Spider. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Salty Drunk says, uh, morning, lads. Great move by the Jazz, keeping the guy that can hit a bucket in the clutch. Or get the whistle. Or get the whistle. But he did make the shot. I mean, he you did. have to give him credit. Uh, KJ, what's up? He says, top of the morning, fellas. Great game. JC went off in the fourth. He really went off in a in that two-shot that two shot sequence. He got fouled back-to-back -back times. Yeah, Karis LeVert three. was on an island and struggled. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Raphael. Good morning, Raphael. How are you? Should Messi come to MLS? Maybe this is a Raphael question. Uh, Mr. E says, games like this show JC and some Jazz fans think he is some kind of closer leader when clearly JC is not. Jazz can't overpay him. Well, I mean, I, I think it's absolutely one of the talking points out of last night. Yeah. We were up there in Austin. The Pierski was joking about, hey, you know, should we extend Jer Jordan Clarkson? I'm like, yeah, I'd be walking right over to Ryan Smith and be like, remember that 60 we talked about? That's going to have to be 80 now. Yeah. You know, like, eh, I don't think you can. I, I really don't think you I can. I don't think that, 
You can't get emotional about JC. That's the thing. You and, can't. and this is the struggle with the Jazz. It, it, it's incredibly difficult to sit in that building or frankly stand when that was happening and look around and see all these people overjoyed about what just what Jordan Clarkson just did and then be like, oh, well, we should trade this guy. But the reality is you should trade him because he's going to walk because you don't want to pay him. Yes. That's, that's exactly just the reality. Right. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's a huge that's a huge deal. Dallin, good morning to you. Uh, says Jazz played well, but uh, shows they don't have a number one to win a chip. Still like Donovan. Well, and you, you don't expect them to. This is a rebuilding team now. Yeah. Um. You know, and and I think you're going to see. You know, we talked about it during the show yesterday, and we we worked all day yesterday to try and get some confirmation, but it, it sounds like the Phoenix Suns have moved on to OG to Ananobi. Yeah. Um, and because I think the Suns, I was told yesterday by an NBA source that the Suns are the most active team right now trying to get a deal done because I think they know without Chris Paul and Devin Booker uh, that it's going to be very difficult for them to, to succeed. And I think they know DeAndre Eaton's not a guy they can count on. And I, I understand, um, you know, when you... What's the right way to say it? I understand that when you look at some of the guys that are available around this league, these trades are not going to be easy to make. And if you're the Phoenix Suns, I think you know you can't count on a guy like DeAndre Ayton. But the problem is, I think a lot of other teams around the league know that the Suns can't count on DeAndre Ayton. And it's going to come at a very high cost yeah. if they want to add another significant performer. And um, I think they please. have to. And I don't know that OG Ananobi is that guy. Oh, I think I think uh, OG can be a, a, a definitely could be a contributor on a championship team. I think that he can't be a number one. Certainly, I don't, I don't think he's that kind of guy. But I think that he could definitely. He's this. This is the thing for the Suns, though. Any move they make, whether it's for OG or whoever, Bogdan the hell they, Bogdanovich, Bogdan Bogdanovich, like any of these names that we've been talking it's, about. Uh, excuse me, it's Bog Bog, please. Yes, right, Bog Bob. Right, Thank sorry, you. my bad. Right, um, which so, is different than Boge Bog. I, I get confused. There's like 18 Bogdanoviches in the league, and and, and I don't Bogey. know, you know, Bagsnatchevich, right? Bo and right. Bog but I will, I will say, Bogdan Bogdanovich solves a lot of the Phoenix Suns' problems. They need I a will culture say that. change. That's what they need. They need fresh blood in that locker room. They need that infusion of energy that a new guy, a new presence brings to the group. And that's what I'm saying. Like whether it's OG, whether it's Bogdan, like whoever you go and get, I think really. You know, but it's important that guy steps up immediately. If they wind up with Bogdan Bogdanovich and some form of Jared Vanderbilt or Malik Beasley. Yeah. Because those are the three players that have been most linked to Phoenix. That's a big upgrade for them. And if they're able to move Jay Crowder out of Phoenix in that deal, which I think is a must. Um, and if, if you're able to, you know, to move on and really minimize the damage that a guy like DeAndre Ayton's doing in your locker room. Meanwhile, you give up a first-round pick to do that, and it puts you back in the NBA Finals. How do you say no to that? Because you feel like if the Phoenix Suns add Bogdan Bogdanovich, a guy like a Malik Beasley, a Jared Vanderbilt, um, you know, I, you feel like that they're able to do that. And the, the thing that's a little disappointing is if you are the the Utah Jazz, you want in on that trade because it brings you a first round pick, which gives you four picks in the first round. Right. Um, you also feel like you get high value for Malik Beasley, and that's the trade that that very clearly can land you a John Collins. Mm -hmm. And this team is dying for a power forward, and I, I, they just don't have one. By the way, Jared Allen goes out of this game injured last night, and I thought it was the reason that the Jazz won the game. Because if Jared Allen's in the in the game, Jordan Clarkson's life is much more difficult. Yeah, they're not getting in the paint that the way they were, and Laurie wasn't getting in the paint the way he was. And and I think it flew under the radar that Jared went out of the game. I mean, I you know we're sitting in this you know driving snowstorm last night on the way home, and nobody's talking about the fact that Allen went out of the game. Well, I was messaging with uh, Teddy Wayman, yeah, who uh, may or may not, may or may not. <coughs> have had, you know, some skin in the game. What? Uh, I don't believe he did. That's well, not true. Well, remember, we had this conversation probably two months ago. Bet We don't bet in Utah. That doesn't, right? Nobody does that, right? Why do people not understand that that happens? Well, like, it's, it's, it's Utah. It's and those again, Mormons. They don't bet. And again, I don't know 
I don't know what Teddy does or doesn't do, but he and I were talking about uh, Jared Allen, and he was he was messaging me and saying, hey, they said on the broadcast, Jared Allen will not return. Mm-hmm. When you're in the arena, they, you can't get that stuff. It's very difficult. Yeah. So I just thought there was a lot last night. But the bottom line is when I, when I look at these scenarios and I look at things and I look at these situations, yeah. I think the Jazz have to address their power forward position aggressively. I think it is a huge hole in their lineup. Um, you are shooting guard heavy, um, you know, and, and I just think that guys like, you know, Jared Vanderbilt's not a long-term fit on this team. Um, Rudy Gay's not a long-term fit on this team very clearly. Um, he has a nice moment and then he has five terrible moments. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you look at Malik Beasley, he should not be a long-term fit on this team. You love having the guy around, but that's not a guy that is a rebuilding guy, right? So you have pieces that other teams want. Jordan Clarkson should be his own separate deal because I think he has tremendous value around the NBA. And again, I can only say so many times the Phoenix Suns are almost desperately working to make a deal to improve their roster. I think the Utah Jazz have to get involved in that mm. because if you if the Phoenix Suns end up with again, you know, a a, a, a Vando, a Beasley, a Bogdan Bogdanovich, how is that going to impact you? Well, it's not really because you're not going to compete for a championship this year or next. So why do you care? Right. You know, and if they wind up offloading a Jay Crowder and let's say a Landry Shamet, which I think would likely be what they did, and a first round pick, and you end up with that first round pick, John Collins, in a filler contract, why do you care? You're far better off at that point. You're going to have four first round picks. Why do you care? Yeah. And by the way, the Suns are sputtering right now, arguably, other than your own their pick is probably the best pick that you're going to have. So it, it just, to me, and I, I don't know how much better they get. I really don't know how much better they get because right now I think they're projected to be the 16th pick. Right. I mean, that that's not the end of the world in my mind. Yeah, I just think that you, you again, I, I just, I don't disagree with anything you said there. And I, and I think that Danny Ainge, the one thing I'll say about Danny is that he has the ability to have that outsider's perspective because he's not, you know, I mean, obviously he him and Ryan are close friends and everything and BYU and we get all that. But, but I think that that Danny can come in here and has come in here and has been unemotional and has just said, Hey, we need to do these deals. And the Jordan Clarkson situation requires you to take the emotion out of it and just do the deal, you know, and deal with it. And like, that's the tough part. I just think that that's what it takes. And that, and I'm glad that Danny's the one in the driver's seat. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see exactly how you, how you end up with that. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how all of that plays. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I think that the Jazz are in a really good spot. You should feel good as a Jazz fan this morning, in my opinion, anyway. Alex Cooley, good morning to you. He says, I know you guys saw Kessler stroke the midi. Sorry, did you, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I thought you said stroke the midi. <laughs> <laughs> and I, now, I could be wrong about this. I am not an attorney. Right. I believe that's a felony in some states. Stroking oh the midi. Oh my god! Just like that. Oh. I mean, I would do if you're gonna do if you're gonna stroke the midi, do it inside. Can you do something for me? The wind affects it when you stroke the midi. Trust well. me when I say that. Uh, he's going to be Brooke Lopez 2.0 in two years. You watch. I would relax with that. Um, I think that Walker Kessler's Dude, a... you like you some Walker Kessler, bro. <laughs> Dude, Alex likes Walker Kessler a uh, lot. Look, I don't... <laughs> I'm not hating on Walker. I, 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 As I've said, I think he should be starting. Kelly Olynyk is a waste of space. Right. Um, but... I, I mean, Brooke Lopez is an elite three-point shooter. Elite three-point shooter. So I, I wouldn't, if Walker Kessler ever gets there, the guy's going to win an MVP because he's physical. He gets to the basket. He is just not refined offensively. And he did hit a baseline jumper that was wet. That was fun to watch, but you know. Uh, Mapes, what's up? Uh, who's a member of the show? He says, love the intro and walking on uh, off the court reaction for Don. Well-deserved. Glad the Jazz fans showed a side that wasn't expected. Yeah, I am really I was proud to be amongst Jazz fans last night. Yeah. I thought Jazz Nation handled this exceptionally well. Um, I think, again, it brings back that, the belief system, it brings back the idea that this is one of the most intelligent fan bases in the NBA. Yeah. And I think at times we get away from that. But, you know, 
I, I thought last night that was great. Alex Cooley says the only thing about Vando is let's say we get into the playoffs next year. Team's just going to play zone and kill us like they did with Rudy. But do you really think that you're not going to improve the roster? I mean, this this roster is going to be, I think, markedly different come summertime. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I just don't think Jared Vanderbilt's of consequence. If he's here, cool. If he's not, cool. Like, he's not a guy of consequence. Yeah. Um, you know, like a, I would love to put Malik Beasley in a time machine and just keep him right where he is so that when you're a contender in two years, but you can't do that. The game doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. So right now you got to trade him. I would love to keep Jordan Clarkson in a time machine and have him be my sixth man in two years, but game doesn't work that way. I'm not paying him 60 million bucks to chill. Right. Right. I'm not doing that. So it'll be interesting to see what the decision they make on him is. You know, like you, you have to do that. Brent Burnett. Good morning. Uh, Brent, not a member. Uh, problem next year is we don't know what the team will be. The draft and trades offseason will be a, a wild knee team. Well, okay. don't all basketball players have knees? Um, just hoping they play hard this year and go deep and surprise. They're not going deep in the playoffs. They're not. This is a horrendously bad defensive team. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they don't protect the rim. They don't. I mean, they're just not good. They don't communicate well. You know, so uh, Mark Hale says, I bet you can't say the national anthem without cheating. Okay, well, maybe someday we'll do that, but not today. That's a different show. Uh, Mr. E, good morning to you. Should the Jazz pay attention to what's going on in Toronto? Uh, not sure if they are blowing that blowing that team. Okay, guys, listen. Why all listen. the adult content this morning? Oh, my God, just like that. Oh. Askel and Ananobi could fit well in Utah. Um, I think... Pascal Siakam is, is that a guy that you're like excited to have on your team? I think he's Vando 2.0, but I don't think he's. He's a far better offensive player. Dude. He's like, a far better offensive player. Yeah, he's a, he can get his own bucket. Like he, he will he's provide you much more, too, but though. I just, I, he's good. He's just, I, I don't know. No, I guess not. I, I guess if I'm doing a deal and I'm trading my assets, I need something a little more guaranteed than Pascal Siakam. That's my problem. Yeah, I look at his deal. Man, he's making bread. You know what I'm saying? He's making $37 million a year. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not doing that. He's an unrestricted free agent in 2024. I'm not doing that. Yeah. That's a huge amount of bread. Thirty. You're gonna pay Pascal Siakam thirty, essentially thirty-eight million dollars next year. Nah, I'm fine. For what? I'm not doing that. Like, I that's that's the deal that this team's got to stay away from. Yeah. That's the deal that this you you as a as a Jazz fan, you need to you need to realize that this year and next year are about not screwing up the salary cap. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you yeah. look at Siakam. I mean, Fred Van, Viet's, Van Vliet's making 21.2. Pascal Siakam's making 35.5 this year. I, that's crazy. And OG Ananobi's making 17 million every single day. Yeah. And I'd love to get Gary Trent Jr. on this team. You yeah. want to talk about upgrading your defense? That's a guy I would value. Yeah, 100%. But, you know, again, that's just me. Um, but, hey, what do I know, right? Uh, all of our Utah Jazz talk in the NBA presented by Quick Quack Car Wash. On this very fine program. Program. Uh, snowing, sleeting, raining this morning. No matter where you are across the valley, be careful driving to work and make sure on the way home you take a quick pit stop at Quick Quack Car Wash because it's quick, it's easy, you're in and out in five minutes. Uh, you get really friendly service. And oh, by the way, you get a great car wash. Uh, those are some of the things I love about Quick Quack Car Wash. And quick is the, uh, quick is the word of the day uh, because Quick Quack Car Wash is quick. You are in and out of there. It's efficient. Even if you go on your lunch, super easy. That's what I like. And I like that I get a human being that's professional, that's smiling, that's friendly. Um, there's nothing not to like about Quick Quack Car Wash. Family friendly. Um, and the other thing is, we always tell you on this show, is they're, they're entrepreneurs. And I like small business. I like supporting small business. Um, and I would hope that you do the same. Okay guys, I'm gonna tell you the secret to impressing my neighbors, the Wyatt coworkers, you name it. I just swing by Quick Quack. It seriously takes two minutes and people can't stop, won't stop checking me out. Getting a clean car is definitely my best life hack. Kids are messy, camping's dirty, but my truck sure isn't. Can't stop, won't stop. Damn right. 
checking me out. Get that money, Doug. Can't stop, won't stop checking me out. I love it. Quick Quack Car Wash uh, brings you Utah Jazz and NBA basketball talk on the Monty Show. Real quick, Um, real quick. Yes. Guys are doing an awesome job on memberships, right? Like we added, I think, five more yesterday. Awesome yep. job. Awesome job. If you Appreciate were that. in the membership group uh, last night, you you were provided with an in arena video from where our seats were uh, at the time when they announced on and you saw the standing O and you really got a sense of like what the building was like. And it was it was a really cool moment. So guys are doing a great job on that. Yeah, and again, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, we began this week offering memberships on the program. The program. Um, program. Yeah, you know. Um, and it really is one of those things where you get exclusive content. And like yesterday, we, you know, again, we put out a video in the arena so that you didn't miss the introductions or the video or any of that. Because I know a lot of people don't have uh, the jazz game on TV. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that everybody saw that. We posted that exclusively in the uh, in the chat yesterday um, on Instagram, which is one of the things that you get at you absolutely get access to as a member. You pay nine ninety nine a month, and what does that get you? It gets you exclusive videos. It gets you first um, access to our contests, our promotions, um, all of that stuff. Chris Karn is coming to our big birthday bash on March tenth. Yes, here at Maverick Center, simply because he was the first membership. On our channel, Chris Carm was the first one to sign up for nine ninety nine. Um, you know, like there, there is a there is a lot to like today um, about being a member of our show, and the Instagram chat is lit. I thought it's it, it. You know, one of the guys we were meeting with yesterday at lunch was telling us, "Hey, you know what, man? I've had some difficult times, and how many times have we had this repeated on the yeah. show, where we'll meet somebody in public and they'll be like, "Hey, dude, you know what? I've had some really difficult times over the last two years." And your show and the chat on the show has really kept me going. And that's what our Instagram group is turning into. It's, it's been great. We've talked about guys losing jobs, guys having babies, guys like we just, uh, it's a big support group. And, you know, frankly, it's a lot of ball busting in the Instagram chat as well. <laughs> but we talked jazz basketball. We talked the national championship. I'm sure we're going to talk NFL playoffs over the weekend. Like being in an Instagram chat group where you can talk about the the situation with Donovan Mitchell last night is really rewarding to a lot of people. You get that with the Monty Show membership, but you must be a member. Easy to sign up. I put the link in the chat. Go on, check it out. Nine ninety nine a month uh, to join the Monty Show. Uh, Salty Drunk says, "I'm sorry. Did you say in and out in five minutes? We really did. No, nah, I I wish it was five minutes. More like fifteen seconds. You know what I'm saying? Like." It is, uh, come on now. It is, it's one of those things right. where. Right, you know, why, why all the adult content today, guys? Yeah, I'm not what sure is, what wh- this what is, is about. What is the, uh, you know, what's the, what, what do we got going? What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Well, like all the comments about, you know, yeah, Walker well, you Kessler, know. you know, in and out in five minutes. Like, you know, you guys are, got some energy. Uh, let's see. Josh Alpaw says, random question. How come you guys don't talk BYU or Utah basketball? Too many games to follow? Not at all. Um, I think there is not a huge appetite for, for BYU and Utah basketball. Cause frankly, I think they're, they're not very good right now. Um, and I know there's a lot of storylines, but, um, it's not something that we focus on the way we focus on the jazz and the NBA or football or, I think there's a lot of, especially at Utah. I mean, the running Utes continue to sputter, and I think a lot of people are, a lot of people have are not have lost interest. Is the way to say that. Now, as the year turns and we get into February and March, obviously that's going to change, you know. So we'll see about that. Uh, Salty Drunk said, "I believe I was the first international member." You jerks! I, I believe you were. <laughs> I believe you were the first international member of the program. Right, the program. That's absolutely the case. Uh, Jake Gordon, who's a member, says you can get in and out in five minutes. The lines are, you can't get in and out. And so like, that's a burger thing. In and out burger. Oh, so see what he did there? In and out and in and out. And it kind of all works together. See what he did there? That's like a play on words. He brought it back to his meat. Right, his meat. Right. Tender, right? Juicy. Juicy, moist. Okay, a lot of cheese there. Uh, yeah, let's move on now because it's awkward. Um, let's do, you want to do some power rankings? Like, Yeah, we can. Because, by the way, the Jazz win last night. Yeah. 
it does this snap them out of their funk? Because I, you get a win like this last night. Yeah. Donnie has his night, 46 and four. But you also got two really good performances out of Jordan Clarkson and Larry Markinen. Yeah, you know, I think this team is just hot and cold. That's what this team is, you know. They're going to win four in a row, then they're going to lose seven in a row, then they're going to win five in a row, and they're going to lose six in a row. Like, it's just how it goes for this team. And I think the thing is, is that not that it's an issue. It's just kind of a fact of life right now that you're you're sporadic, you're inconsistent. Yeah. Again, that word consistency or inconsistency, that word really, you know, defines how good you are in the league. And, and oftentimes, they are tremendously inconsistent. I mean, again... We would be having a very different conversation if Jordan Clarkson doesn't get that that what was it a seven point possession or whatever it ended yep. up being you know like that's 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 game changing that's a special performance to win the game so that's what I'm saying like that's the issue you win last night's game on a special performance at the end you probably didn't really deserve to win that game up until that point and then Jordan did Jordan and the tables turned so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this team is just young, gritty, work-hard team right now. And by the way, I thought Agbaji played his ass off last night. I know he didn't have some huge night in the box. I know that the guy doesn't put up huge numbers, but watching him, watching the effort, you know, watching him be in the right place at the right time to get timely rebounds, that's what I'm talking about developmentally speaking with Ochai, the guy is developing in front of your eyes, and you need to enjoy him. If Because I, I, I don't know how long he's going to be here. I don't know. He feels like somebody that could go either way. He may be here long term. Ochai. They, yeah, Ochai. Mm. They, they may include him in a trade package to kind of top something off to complete a three-teamer that they really need to get done. So I would just tell you to enjoy this guy while he's here. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. You know, I mean, one of the other interesting questions is why you guys don't hit the like button on this show anymore like it, it used to be. But, you know, yeah, I mean, oh, my bad, my bad. Maybe you don't hit the like button because I don't hit the camera button. But that's not really the point on the show. No, um, no, no. I think Ochai's interesting. I, I think, A, they didn't have a guy on the bench that was positive. Yeah. Everybody was a negative plus minus. But I thought Nikhil Alexander-Walker had some really good minutes last night. I thought he contributed at a very high level. I, I, the the hole in this in this lineup continues to be that you don't have a legit big off the bench like Fontecchio played five minutes and gave you nothing, you know like it, you don't have a big coming off your bench you know like yeah. Juzang and Potter are both up but neither one of them saw a minute you know like I mean so you're not getting young performance off your bench and obviously when you look at what you really have to go to your best three four combo guy is probably and dare I say it out loud, is probably Rudy Gay on the offensive end and Jared Vanderbilt on the defensive end. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I look at, I think you have to start Walker Kessler now. Like, I, I just don't think you have a whole lot to hang on to here. It is a very, very difficult, it's a very, very difficult job Will Hardy's doing right now. Yeah, I you agree. Know, so, and with the injuries they have, it'd be great if you could get Colin Sexton healthy for the second half of the season. <laughs> That'd be fabulous. Yeah, I mean, they're dealing with it. There's no doubt. They're, they're you know, Vando get, had to go back to the locker room last night with a little shoulder thing or whatever. Like, you know, you, you just, you you get beat up. That's just the fact of life. Is Jared Vanderbilt a must-have? Is he a guy that, like, how valuable, if we're if we're really being honest, how valuable is, is Jared Vanderbilt to this team? Well, I don't think he's a must-have guy. I think that he's definitely a tradable piece. I, I, I wish... Frankly, for his sake, but also just for this team's sake, that he could knock down the corner three. That's all I want him to do. I just want you to be able to hit, you know, three out of every 10 you shoot. You know what I mean? Like, just hit the timely corner three. When, when you're very rarely asked to shoot it, make that one shot, you know? Because if you do that, now all of a sudden, all you have to do is is be solid defensively and not get in foul trouble and you're going to you're going to get minutes. And that to me, I know it sounds really easy, but like we were talking to Austin Apierski and his buddy last night watching pregame warmups and you can see just how clunky Vando's mechanics are, how disengaged his top half is. He shot two air balls. Bottom. He shot two air balls in warmups on threes out of the corner. Yeah. And then Ochai, you know, strolls over there and just rips them. Yeah. Like it, it, like just nails, dude. Like nothing but net. So yeah. 
I, I've difference. lost my. What's I, and I'm trying to be gentle. I've lost my enthusiasm. Enthusiasms for Jared Vanderbilt. Right. Like I, this guy is somebody that they should trade. There's, there's just no. Like I, I mean, I never had it with uh, who's another guy? Uh, Yudoka Azubuki. He's not an NBA player. He's just not. Yeah. Jared Vanderbilt is an NBA player who needs to go to a winning culture and develop that way. That's what he needs. I, I, I don't think he's a bad player, but he's not somebody of consequence. That's the that's what I just keep going back to. Yeah. Uh, Salty Drunk, who's a member of the program, says, I would argue Kessler is softer than Rudy Gobert. I know he's young, but that dude needs to throw some steel around in the offseason. Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt he will. He's a freshman. I mean, yeah. the guy's a rookie. He's a really good shot blocker. Again, we saw that last night. I just, I, he needs time. Yeah. He needs time. And that's I agree. what he's he He's got to put weight on. He's got to put muscle on. There's no doubt. And I think, you know, I, I do think there's development happening with him. You see it in front of your eyes. I, I think, you know, everyone wants to talk about how, you know, the comment Don made about how Walker was like calling out the defense he was going to play. And he, you know, Don like in game gave him that advice or whatever. And those are things that's things that are going to happen. But I'm just sitting here saying that, hey, the guy's a gifted shot blocker. I think his screens are getting better, although he does move a lot, and that's why he's getting whistled for that. Um, so that's what I'm saying. It's just details. But yeah, I, I would guess in the offseason his mission is gonna be to add, you know, ten pounds of muscle. I would guess. Yep. Uh Dallin says, anyone know where uh <sighs> Hassan Whiteside went? Uh, he's a free agent. Yeah, uh, I just I was actually messaging with somebody uh, the other day that knows Hassan Whiteside. Uh, he is not playing at the moment. Seems like he just disappeared from the NBA because he's a head case. Yeah, he is a very difficult guy to manage. Hassan Whiteside. He is. He deals with. I think it's probably strong to say mental health issues, but um, from what I understand, he has some anxiety issues. So you can't really predict what he's going to be day in and day out. When he shows up, he's great. Problem is, he doesn't show up a lot. Yeah. So you can't count on him. Sean Carden says uh, NAW was the only one that seemed to push the ball off the rebound. Well, that's his deal. I mean, he's your he's your Jordan Clarkson this year from last year, right? You need him. You need him to bring the heat, which is why I say I think Jordan Clarkson his highest best use is a six man. Yeah. Pretty pretty plain Agreed. and simple. Agreed. Uh, Alex Cooley, Vando's solid on defense, but no shot whatsoever and no touch around the rim. You almost always know he's going to miss. Exactly. Yep. Exactly right. Uh, Jake Gordon says, uh, Vando does have a high motor, lacks a shot, but you got to love the hustle. You do. You do. But on this team, on this team, you need guys that have high offensive upside. Yeah. That's, what you, that's why you need to play NAW. That's why you need to play Ochai. Ochai's got to get heavy minutes. It's, you know, frankly, and the one thing I worry about, we talked about it at the game last night. How many minutes is Ochai taking from Malik Beasley? And justifiably so, by the way. Yeah. But how much, how much damage are you doing to both guys? Because if you trade Malik Beasley, Ochai's minutes go way up. If you keep Malik Beasley, Ochai's minutes are not as much as they should be. If you keep Malik Beasley, uh, Malik Beasley's not being showcased the way he needs to be showcased. And if you trade Malik Beasley... That's great for him. Yeah. There's a right way and a wrong way here. Yep. You know, 100%. I, 100%. That's just me, And though. I think that's the balance you have to find on a rebuilding team. You have to find the balance of how much are we going to play guys that we want to trade to keep their value up versus how much do we need to play our guys that we know are going to be here to develop them. Yeah. Uh, all right. Football 50 in five minutes on the program. The program. program. Um, going to talk NFL playoffs, and we got to talk about USC. Right. In five minutes, I want to talk about how good USC is because they, Lincoln Riley made a decision yesterday that was quite, quite perplexing. Uh huh. I don't understand it, but we'll see. We'll see. How good is USC? That's in five minutes right here uh, on the program. The program. Um, you know, one of the interesting questions around NBA power rankings, rectally speaking, is. Rectally speaking. Is. Who's the best team in the NBA right now? I, I, I'm I, obviously I'm going to make the argument it's the Boston Celtics, but I think I could make an argument it's also the Denver Nuggets, because the Nuggets continue to play 800 basketball on a pretty regular basis. Right. They are a team that I think could be better defensively and will get better defensively, but if Michael Porter Jr. is going to 
you know, put body bags out every night, that team's going to be unstoppable. Right. Because that dude can shoot, and I think he makes... I think he makes a lot of space for, you know, the dad bod God. Uh-huh. Like, I think he makes a lot of space for Jokic. Uh-huh. And I think Jamal Murray, you can see Jamal Murray is getting better and better and better every single game he plays. Yeah, and I think and, that's how it works with ACLs, man. You, you, get, you get better, you get stronger. And he's missed time, which is, again, and this is Colin Sexton, Guys who rehab major knee injuries almost always have hamstrings and calf injuries coming back. What do you bench? But you look at the way that Denver is playing right now, and you look at the 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 way that that team is put together, and I'm just I, I'm astounded by the fact that they are flying largely under the radar. Yeah. Now, if you said to me, "Hey, are the Denver Nuggets a threat to win the NBA championship?" I would tell you not. But when we do power rankings next hour, I'm going to have a hard time not putting them at the top of the list. The Celtics? Or no, the Nuggets. The Nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think if you if we got a Boston Denver NBA Finals, I think that would be six games of compelling hoop. Yeah. Hell, that's a hell of a series. That's a that's a great series waiting to happen. I think you know, the, the tough part is 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 you have to ask the question, are the Celtics just going to do this in the regular season and run out of steam in the postseason because they have played a lot of basketball because they have a lot of mileage on the tires? Or run. is this team going to go all the way through? And will Brad Stevens make a deal at the deadline? Oh, I have to think he will. I have to think he will. I, I have to, like, any championship front office makes deals at the deadline. You, you always are out there hunting for that one extra feather in your cap that puts you over the top. Yeah, maybe they can get Juan Toscano Anderson from the Lakers. JTA. Shut up. Like he, <laughs> the Lakers are because so frustrating. Garbage. The Lakers are so frustrating to me. Uh, it is. And again, I get it. You all hate the Lakers, and I, I don't. I'm not a. I wouldn't call myself a Laker fan, but that team is wasting it's LeBron James. Dude. It's frustrating that LeBron James is not playing games of consequence. Yeah, it is. It is incredibly frustrating. And I'm sure the league's me. not happy about that. By the way, the other question I would ask: Are the New York Knicks? <laughs> am I really going to say this on this show, guy? Are the New York Knicks on the come? Oh, I bro, said it. what the hell are you talking about right now? What? Do you, what? I believe. I believe. Uh, sorry, wait, wait, wait. Are the New York <laughs> Knicks on the come? Yeah. Oh my God! Just like that. Are oh. they on? The, have you never heard that thing? <laughs> <laughs> on the rise. Okay, well that's different than on the come. I am here to serve the chat. Please. I am here to serve the chat. That's just that's that's my job. I love that drop, by the way. Please. Please. That's one of my favorite drops Please. that you've added recently. <laughs> you know. Uh, Salty Drunk says, Jokic, fat. Yeah, he is. No, he's Dad not. Dad bought God. Up. You shut fat. your ass. His, fat. his brothers fat. will kick your ass. Well, you know. First um, team all fat Serbian. Let's see. Brunson being, uh, Brunson been going dummy. He's a stud, dude. Yeah. He is. For real. He is a stud. 